Hello and good evening. Today we are going to ta be talking about how to make South Texas brush tacos. Now, let's go over some of the ingredients. What we're going to have is traditionally we would use wild hog, the back shoulder. Um, but today we are, since I don't have any on me, we are going to be using pork shoulder. Okay. And what you're going to want to have is between four to five pounds. And we're going to go over a few of the things. You're going to need to your, get yourself some fajita seasoning, black pepper, garlic powder, Italian dressing, and if you are using wild hog, you might need to get one of these to help tenderize. Bell peppers, and you need essentially two bell peppers per, I mean about a bell pepper per pound, so yeah, uh, to about two bell peppers per two and a half pounds to two pounds. An onion for two to two and a half pounds, so we're going to use two in this. We have five pounds of meat. And yes, more garlic, garlic cloves. I'll also need yourself a 14 inch deep Dutch oven or whatever you have available. Now, let's get started. So when you get your meat out of the package, the first things what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off this fat. We don't wanna have too much fat on it. This is unnecessary and it give it kind of a bad taste. So we wanna go ahead and just remove the fat as much as possible off of it. Now, some of you might be wondering, where did South Texas brush tacos come from? And I'll be honest with you. It was a trick. I had friends that would refuse to eat wild game. And so I came up with a recipe that tasted so good that they would eat it up. And then I let them know afterwards. So this is for, this recipe just helps tenderize virtually any piece of meat. Okay, it could be you could also use beef. It could be an old roast that's been sitting in your freezer for too long. But typically, you're going to use pork. Alrighty. Now, these pieces, if they're too thick, like this is a little too thick, we're going to go ahead and slice it a little thinner. Now, once you're done cutting all your meat up, make it as thin as possible or about the thickness you'd like, and removing as much fat as possible, you still may need to tenderize it. Let me show you this. This has about 45 little knives in it, and this is to help you tenderize it a little bit more. This meal is designed for tougher cuts of meat. So when you're dealing with wild hog, in this case, this is store-bought, so we really don't need this, but this is a handy device you might want to invest in. You could also use beef roast or something else. It's, once again, designed for that tougher cuts of meat. Now we need to go into our next phase once this is all tenderized and ready to go. So once you get all your meat laid out flat, as I'm showing you here, we're gonna go ahead and season it. And as I told you, this is simple. We're gonna do fajita seasoning. We're just go ahead and sprinkle this. I use a lot of fajita seasoning through all my recipes, so I buy the big containers. We're gonna go with a little bit of black powder, excuse me, pepper. Don't use black powder. We don't want explosive. Nope. And don't overdo it on the garlic powder. Remember, we're going to use some garlic cloves later on in the recipe. So this is what it's going to look like. And then we're going to go ahead and do the next layer. Okay, now once you add the next layer of meat, once again, repeat the process. Fajita seasoning. And once again, this is for the tougher cuts of meat. So if you don't have a hold of pork shoulder, you can use anything. You don't have to use tougher cuts, but this really tenderizes it. Once again, don't overdo it on the garlic powder because we're going to add some more later on. Now, the last ingredients, which 
might surprise you is Italian dressing. And we're gonna go ahead and drench the rest of this meat in Italian dressing. Now this will sit in the fridge for two to three days. Now if you're doing store-bought meat like I'm doing here, two days will be fine enough. But if you're using wild game, go ahead and do that for three days. Now sometimes when you shoot a hog, you kind of have to leave it in the cooler for about three days soaking in ice anyway. So after you're done with that process, then you can start this one. Okay, so it gets pretty full and it looks like this when it's done. It's gonna soak in there for three days and once we're done with that, we'll cut it into thin strips and then we'll put it in the Dutch oven. So I'll see you in three days. Okay, it's been three days now, if you noticed, I wearing a different t-shirt now. Uh, we decided to go for the full three days instead of the two. Meat came out quite nice. So first things first, we need to cut up our vegetables. Now, I don't wanna do any cross contamination, so we'll cut them first on the cutting board first. Now, when it comes to garlic, obviously garlic has a pretty pungent odor, so you wanna cut that as small as you want. We're gonna go ahead and do 10 cloves. That's about, you know, oh, I guess that'd be about five per every two and a half pounds, so that should uh, do you good. When you're done with that, we got a big old bowl. We're just gonna mix all our veggies in it. And uh, we have, of course, our four bell peppers. Now, I don't like to chop them very small, so go ahead and uh, do the size you want. And I don't like the uh, small little diced up ones. I like the big strips. So go ahead and just cut up your vegetables nice and fine the way you want it. I like to go ahead and do little strips like that. And that's what you're looking for. I like going ahead and maybe chopping that once and those are the thin strips you want. I'll chop this all off camera though. And as far as the onions, once again, we're gonna go and do the same thing. We kind of want thin strips. And just get your thin strips and then just put it on in there. We're gonna go ahead and chop this all up and we'll be back right with you. Okay, so we've cut all the veggies. We've got about a five pound bowl. I got my wonderful camera lady showing you that up close. It looks all pretty in that bowl, doesn't it? Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and cutting up the meat. What I want you to do is cut these in long strips as I've already started. And these are gonna be about three eighths of an inch thick to half inch. And what you wanna do is cut across the grain so when they cook, they uh, kind of break apart in your taco. Also, another way is you can go ahead and, if you don't want to put it in a Dutch oven, you can go ahead and you can uh, go ahead and grill or barbecue it and you can cook it up and the veggies you can do separately. And we'll go ahead and get this cut up and we'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now it's time to get our cooking on. We've actually preheated our Dutch oven for 10 minutes. We have about half the amount of coals on the bottom as we do on top. Go ahead and take our lid off. And we're gonna go ahead and spray it down with some grapeseed oil. We're still in the process of seasoning this Dutch oven, so always have some good uh, grapeseed oil for now. Go ahead and just dump our meat in here. And our wonderful amount of vegetables. Now, you need to go ahead and always use a wooden spoon when it comes to cast iron. You use plastic, but never metal. Get this all mixed in. Now this will take about 45 minutes. So give it a little bit of time, but in about 45 minutes, it'll be all nice and cooked together. Now, it takes, sometimes it takes a little bit more time, sometimes an hour, but generally 45 minutes. Okay, we're in the half hour mark. I've actually had to add some more coals to uh, raise the temperature a bit. Let's go take a look at what we got. Okay, so we're gonna have to go ahead and do the full hour it's taking a little longer than expected, but this is a lot of meat and veggies. Almost 10 pounds worth of food in there. So just give it a good stir. 
And once you're done, just close it off. And we'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay, we are officially done. Now it took a little extra time, a lot longer than normal, about an hour and 10 minutes, but it's quite chilly outside. So I think that's what contributed to the time. Let's take a look what we got. It's quite simmering quite well. Kind of get some bubbling. So make sure when you do this, grab yourself some tortillas. Oh, look how tasty this looks. We're gonna go ahead and grab some up right now. And what you're gonna do you can go ahead and sprinkle yourself some cheese. And there you go. South Texas brush tacos. Now, if you have any comments, please leave them. And we'll get back with you. If you like this channel, please subscribe.